one uh, simple example two points are tossed together to find the chance of getting at least one hat if we approach if we apply this set theoretic approach the sample space s means the set of all possible outcomes so h h h t t h t t now define the event let a be the event of getting at least one hat so how many outcomes are favorable to a at least one hat two hat one hat and one hat okay so a equals to the set h h h t and t h here you see a is a subset of set so in set theoretic approach we say that an event is a subset of the sample space s so required probability number of favorable outcomes number of favorable outcomes means the number of elements in the event a divided by total number of possible outcomes total number of possible outcomes means the number of elements in the sample space s that means 3 upon 4 so from here we get a definition this is called the set, set theoretic definition if a be an event on the sample space s then the probability of occurrence of the event a is given by n a upon n s n a means number of elements in the event a and n s means number of elements in the sample space s an example write the sample space if three coins are tossed simultaneously so three coins are tossed simultaneously so for first coin two possible outcomes for second coin also two possible outcomes for third one also two possible outcomes so when three coins are tossed simultaneously so number of possible outcomes will be 2 into 2 into 2 that means 8 that means the sample space will contain eight elements and how can i find it find out for the first coin ht the set ht into for second coin ht into again for the third coin the set ht simply the set multiplication and these are the eight possibilities you can also find out using a tree diagram you see just try to follow this tree diagram it's very interesting so for first coin either h or t these are the two possibilities now if the first coin results in a head what about the second coin either h or t now if the first one results head second one also head what about the third coin either h or t now if the first coin results in a head second coin tail what about the third coin either h or t now let us start from t if the first coin results in a tail then what about the second coin either h or t first coin tail second head third one either h or t finally first tail second also tail then the third coin may result either in head or in tail now see these are the branches of tree h h h another one is h h t then h t h h t t then t h h t h t t t h and t t and t t t so these are the eight possibilities so the sample space here also we can write this way also h h h h h t in this way this is the sample space now if we throw if we toss a coin and, uh, and throw a dice together then the sample space will for coin two possibilities for dice six possibilities so when these two experiments are conducted together so total number of possibilities 2 into 6 equals to 12 many students make mistake here they write 2 plus 6 this is the general principle of counting for first coin two possibilities for second uh, for for dice uh, six possibilities so when a coin and dice are thrown together the number of possibilities 2 into 6 that means 12 so the sample space will contain 12 elements h t into for coin the set h t for dice the set 1 to 3 for 5 6 6 so Simply we can write h1, h2 in this way: h6, t1, t2 up to t6. Let us 
see one uh, Venn diagram. Did you see? Suppose the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and A equals to event of an of even number, B is event of odd number and C event of prime. So even number means how many elements will be there in A? 2, 4, 6 and element in B will be 1, 3, 5 and what about C? C means the event of prime. Out of these how many primes are there? 2, 3 and 5. Now here definitely A and B are mutually exclusive because an outcome cannot be even as well as odd. It will be either an even or odd. But A and B are mutually exclusive because an outcome can be even as well as a prime. That means 2. 2 is even as well as prime. So A and C are not mutually exclusive or in set theoretic approach we say mutually disjoint. Similarly, B and C are not mutually disjoint. So in the Venn diagram, when we draw a Venn diagram, this rectangle represents the sample space S or in set theoretic approach what you, you write U, the universal set. And A and B, you see, they do not have any common area, common region because A and B are mutually exclusive. But A and C is having a common region because A and C are not mutually exclusive. <coughs> Similarly, B and C having a common region because B and C are not mutually exclusive. And this is the Venn diagram. We shall use these types of Venn diagrams of some theory of probability.